It's time now for Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. Ladies and gentlemen, Anison and Colinos present Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, one of the most famous characters of American fiction in one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight and every Thursday at this same time, the famous old investigator takes from his file and brings to us one of his most celebrated missing persons cases. Tonight's case is entitled, The Case of the Two-Faced Murderer. There's hardly a person who doesn't suffer now and then from the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. That's why you'll want to know about Anison. It's a way that thousands of people are using because it acts incredibly fast to relieve such pains. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, it contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients. Literally thousands of people have been introduced to Anison by their own physicians and dentists who have given them Anison tablets at some time or other. For your own sake, when you want prompt relief from the pain of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia, try Anison. You'll be delighted with the relief it brings. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Ask for Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N, at any drug counter. Now for Mr. Keene and the case of the two-faced murderer. Our scene opens in a modest suburban cottage. A young man is just crossing towards the door, a stubborn, unhappy expression on his face. Suddenly, a very beautiful young woman emerges from another room and pauses in surprise. Russell, where are you going? I'm going out, Jean. But it's nearly midnight. Never mind. I'll spend the night in a hotel. You're angry about something. Why shouldn't I be? It's bad enough to be out of a job. But when someone tells me my wife's been meeting another man behind my back... That isn't true, Russell. Isn't it? No. All right, deny it. But I've got proof. Aren't you going to give me a chance to explain? There's nothing to explain, Jean. I... What are you looking at? There was someone outside the window. What? A a face was peering in the window just now. It... It looked like Jeffrey Tate. Well, I don't see anyone. You've got Jeffrey Tate on your mind so much, you even believe you're seeing his face wherever you go. Russell, please. I'll call you in the morning, Jean. Russell! Tate. That's all I've been hearing. Jeffrey Tate. Well, she can have him. Jean thinks that... Who's there? Who's hiding behind... Oh. Are you crazy? Put that gun down. No! No! Don't shoot! Don't! Ah! When I heard the shots, Mr. Keith, I ran out of our cottage and found my husband, Russell, lying on our lawn, dead. You say you'd seen a man named Jeffrey Tate peering into your window, Mrs. Owens, just before the murder? Yes, Mr. Keene. But the police haven't picked this Tate fella up yet, boss. My partner, Mike Clancy, read the details of your husband's murder in the morning paper, Mrs. Owens. But I haven't had a chance to go over them myself. I told the police that I saw Jeffrey Tate outside our window, Mr. Keene. And they're searching for him. But he left his home last night and they haven't been able to locate him. I see. Jeffrey must have gone out of his mind to do a thing like that. To murder my husband. And he may strike at me. I suppose if he did it, it wouldn't matter very much. Now that Russell's dead, life doesn't seem worthwhile anymore. Living must carry on for the dead, Mrs. Owens, in spite of their unhappiness. Well, at least I'll see that Jeffrey Tate gets what he deserves. That's my one ambition now, Mr. Keene. Putting Russell's killer behind prison bars. And I know that you're the man who can do it. Jeffrey Tate is missing, and you're known as one of the greatest authorities on missing people in the country. And that's why I'm here, sir. To ask for your help. Is that the only reason, Mrs. Owens? What do you mean, Mr. Keene? 
When you described the events preceding the murder, you said you had a quarrel with your husband. It was evidently over this man, Jeffrey Tate. That's true. Russell, my husband, thought I was seeing Jeffrey behind his back. Were you? I saw him, yes. I have nothing to hide, Mr. Keenan. I've told this to the police. I was seeing Jeffrey Tate because my husband was out of a job. And Jeffrey's engineering firm has a wonderful opening for him. Go on, Mrs. Owens. I knew Jeffrey years ago, but I believe he was in love with me once. Russell knew that. That's why he was so jealous. Mm. Then you believe Jeffrey Tate might have killed your husband because of unrequited love? I don't know, but I saw him there at the window, Mr. Keene. Isn't that enough evidence? Not quite. A murderer would hardly let himself be spotted so easily just before he commits a crime. No, there's something odd in the circumstances. Tell me, is uh, Jeffrey Tate still a bachelor? No, he's been married for years. Well, Mrs. Owens, suppose I investigated this case and found out that Tate wasn't actually guilty of murdering your husband. But who else could have done it, Mr. Keene? Everyone is a suspect in a murder case. That is, everyone who may have had a motive. Even you could be considered a suspect by the police. What? If I take this case, Mrs. Owens, I promise you I'll find the actual killer, no matter who he or she may be. Mr. Keene, just find my husband's murderer and give me a chance to say in my heart that I did everything I could to see that justice was done. Very well, Mrs. Owens, I have your address. And you'll hear from me after I have a chance to go over the details with the police. Thank you, Mr. Keene. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Clancy. So long, ma'am. Goodbye, Mrs. Owens. She's a very beautiful young woman, isn't she, Mike? Well, sure, and a girl with looks like that can start trouble pretty easily, Mr. Keene. Well, how do you mean? Oh, this business has seen another man outside of her window. Just before her husband was shot. Well, it's just her word against the other man's, that's all. Maybe she didn't see anyone at all. Just followed her husband out the door with a gun in her hand. And the motive for killing her husband? Well, maybe we'll find that out when we find out if her husband left any money. Well, Mike, in my opinion... Uh... Oh, I'd get it, boss. Mr. Keene's office. Is this Mr. Keene speaking? Oh, this is his partner, Mike Clancy. May I talk to Mr. Keene, please? Well, uh, who's calling, mister? Tell him it's... It's Jeffrey Tate. Hold on a second. Mr. Keene... It's Jeffrey Tate. Oh. It's the fellow the police are looking for, for the Russell Owens murder. Well, let me have the phone, Mike. Hello? Mr. Keene? Yes. This is Jeffrey Tate speaking. I've just returned to my home, and my wife has informed me that I'm wanted for murder. I'm sure the police want to question you, Mr. Tate. Mr. Keene, I didn't kill Russell Owens, and I'm not afraid to give myself up. Before I do, however, I'd like to talk to you and ask your help. Are you at home now? Yes, I'm here with my wife. My address is 11 North Adams Street. My partner and I will drive up immediately. Please don't inform the police until I've had a chance to talk to you, Mr. Keene. That's all I ask. Very well, Mr. Tate. Since you're doing this voluntarily, I'll keep it confidential for a little while longer. I'll be waiting for you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Get the car, Mike. We're driving to Jeffrey Tate's home immediately. That phone call may put an entirely different aspect on the Owens murder case. Yes? My name is Keene. This is my partner, Mike Clancy. I'm here in answer to Mr. Tate's phone call. My husband isn't here, Mr. Keene. You're Mrs. Tate? Yes. But he just phoned our office man and said he wanted to give himself up. I know that, Mr. Clancy. However, I persuaded him to go away. May we come in, Mrs. Tate? If you wish. However, you won't find Jeffrey here. Who is that man standing in the living room? His name is Frederick Barlow. Oh. But he has nothing to do with this matter. He and my husband are old friends. You say Mr. Tate went away? He was crazy to phone you, Mr. Keene. He wouldn't have a chance if he gave himself up. And I'm not going to stand by and see my own husband, the man I love, falsely accused of murder. Try not to get excited, Barbara. Mr. Keene is only trying to do his duty. You're Mr. Barlow? Yes. I'm sorry to meet you under these circumstances, Mr. Keene. I know of your reputation. I've been wanting to make your acquaintance for years. 
Mike. Uh, yes, boss. Search the house thoroughly. Okay, Mr. Keith. He can search it from top to bottom, but he won't find my husband. Do you realize, Mrs. Tate, how difficult that will make matters for your husband? What do you mean, difficult? Jeffrey was practically being accused of murder already. Yes, but he could have defended himself, and I would have helped him do it. Now, as a fugitive from justice, he's become even more of a suspect. I don't care, Mr. Keene. I only want to make certain Jeffrey is safe. Barbara, I think you're being very foolish. Please keep out of this, Frederick. Mr. Barlow, were you here when Mr. Tate left the house? Now, wait a minute, Mr. Keene. I had nothing to do with it. Please answer my question. Yes, I was here. Then you know where Jeffrey Tate has gone. Why, uh... Frederick, if you tell Mr. Keene, you'll regret it. I'll never speak to you again as long as I live. And Jeffrey will hate you for it. I don't think he'll hate me, Barbara. Jeffrey's not that kind of man. He left here against his will because you started to get hysterical. You know I didn't agree with you, and I thought Jeff should place his faith in Mr. Keene's ability to find the real murderer. Tell Mr. Keene, then. Tell him where Jeffrey went. Go on. Give your best friend away to the police. I have no intention of doing that, Barbara, I assure you. Perhaps the police may compel you to do it, Mr. Barlow. In that case, I'd have no choice, Mr. Keene. However, right now, I know nothing of Jeff Tate's whereabouts, officially. Good night, Barbara. May I have your permission to leave, Mr. Keene? I can't hold you, but I'll have to report your part in all this to the police. As you wish, Mr. Keene. Well, Mrs. Tate, are you going to be reasonable and give me a chance to find out whether your husband is innocent or not? No, Mr. Keene. You can stay here until morning if you like, but you won't get any further information out of me. Mr. Keene, sir? Yes, Mike? Come in here for a second, sir. I found something important. What is it, Mike? Well, it's here in the study, Mr. Keene. But first, take a look at that picture on the mantelpiece. Signed to Barbara with all my love, Jeffrey. Well, that must be a photograph of Jeffrey Tate. Now come over to the desk. Look at this mask. Hmm. Where did you find the mask, Mike? Inside the desk, boss. And it looks as if it's made of some kind of plaster. And it's the image of that fellow there in the picture. Well, you're right, Mike is a life-size plaster likeness of Jeffrey Tate's face. It's hollow in the inside. And the signature of the sculptor appears to have been cut into the inside. I can read the name Dario. Well, what do you make of it, Mr. Keene? Well, Jean Owens claims just before her husband was murdered, she saw a glimpse of Jeffrey Tate's face outside her window. It was almost midnight, and the light was probably bad. Well, sure, and maybe... Someone else could have been wearing this mask so as to look like Jeffrey Tate and make him take the blame for the killing. It's an interesting theory, Mike. It's certainly worth looking into. Apparently, this case has taken a strange new twist. If the theory concerning this mask is correct, we're actually looking for a two faced murderer. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll return to Mr. Keene and the case of the two-faced murderer. Meanwhile, stop tooth decay and unpleasing breath. Yes, stop tooth decay and unpleasing breath that breeds between the teeth. Use Colonos toothpaste with dental floss action. Your dentist will tell you, brush your teeth after meals to stop decay. Clean those cracks and crevices deep between your teeth to guard against unpleasing breath. Now, Colonos gives you dental floss action. That is, sends thousands of active cleansing bubbles to help dislodge bits of food that can cause unpleasing breath. What's more, foamy, refreshing colonos brightens teeth by removing ordinary yellow surface stains. Helps stop tooth decay. Get colonos toothpaste with dental floss action today. Now, back to Mr. Keene and the case of the two-faced murderer. Mr. Keene, the eminent investigator, and his partner, Mike Clancy, are investigating the strange murder of Russell Owens, who was shot to death just outside his suburban cottage. Among the suspects is a man named Jeffrey Tate, who has disappeared, hiding somewhere at his wife Barbara's insistence. But now, Mr. Keene and Mike have found another clue to the murder in the Tate house. And as Mr. Keene confronts Barbara Tate with the evidence... Mrs. Tate... Have you ever seen this plaster mask before? Oh, Mr. Keene, where did you get that? My partner, Mike Clancy, found it in your husband's desk in the study. 
According to the photograph of your husband, this mask is a perfect likeness of him. Why, I... I haven't seen that mask in years. I thought it was lost. If you really want to help your husband prove his innocence, Mrs. Tate, better you tell us the truth. Mike is right. This mask may be an important clue that might absolve Jeffrey Tate from a charge of murder. How do you mean, Mr. Keene? Well, someone may have used this mask to impersonate your husband. What? Russell Owens was shot late at night. And just before the murder, his wife thought she saw your husband's face peering in through the window. You mean some other man could have worn that mask, trying to place the blame for the murder on my husband? Perhaps, Mrs. Tate. But I'm not fully convinced that's the entire truth. But it's something to work on. Oh, Mr. Keene, I'd do anything to prove that Jeffrey is innocent. But I... I don't know much about that mask. Jeffrey had it when we were married. Do you know where he got it? Yes, I do. Jean Owens gave it to him. Jean Owens, the murdered man's wife? Yes, Mr. Keene. She and my husband knew each other before I met Jeffrey. So she told me. She also said that she quarreled with her husband, Russell, because of Jeffrey. Russell Owens thought she was seeing your husband on the slide. My husband's always been faithful to me, Mr. Keene. Jean Owens may have chased well, according him, but... to Jean Owens, she only saw your husband so as to get a job for Russell in your husband's engineering firm. Mrs. Tate, uh, the signature of the sculptor who called himself Dario is inscribed on this mask. Have you ever heard the name before? No, Mr. Keene. Now, for the last time, Mrs. Tate, will you tell me where your husband has gone? I don't know. Oh, she's hedging again, boss. No, that's the truth, Mr. Clancy. Oh, I admit I begged Jeffrey to leave the house before you came and persuaded him not to give himself up. But I, I honestly don't know where he went. And I may never see him again, either. Well, will you promise to get in touch with me if you do hear from him? You... You really meant it, Mr. Keene, when you said you'd help him? Yes. If I'm convinced he's innocent of murdering Russell Owens. Very well. I'll do as you ask. All right, Mike, let's get started. Where to, boss? We're going over to the Owens cottage, the scene of the murder. And ask Jean Owens where she obtained this mask before she gave it to Jeffrey Tate. This must be the Owens house, Mike Park over here in front of the door Right, sir Mr. Keene There's another car parked in the driveway Yes, so I noticed, Mike the house door's open, boss. Look. Well, come along, Mike. I've got a feeling we're running into more trouble. Inside, Mike. This way. Saints preserve us, Mr. Keene. There's a woman's body on the floor. Mike. It's Jean Owens. Oh, she's dead, boss. She's been strangled. Yes. And look at her throat. It's all discolored. But not from the effects of the strangulation. This looks like some kind of clay or putty on her neck. Mr. Keene? Stand where you are, mister. You don't need that gun. I'm I'm not armed. Boss, this fellow looks like that picture of Jeffrey Tate we saw in his house. I believe it is, Mr. Tate. Yes, I'm Jeffrey Tate. I I was just about to phone for the police when I heard you come in. Sure, that's a good story, all right. You've got two victims to your list now, mister. And I'm not letting you add a third. Just a moment with those handcuffs, Mike. Mr. Tate, have you any explanation for being found here with Jean Owens' body? Oh, I, I came into the house just before you did, Mr. Keene, and, and found her on the floor. Why did you come here? I wanted to ask Jean why she was so certain that I was the man she saw outside her window, just before her husband was murdered. And why did you leave your home after phoning me? Barbara, my wife, insisted that I go. But I was going to give myself up after I talked to Jean Owens and... And tried to find out why she implicated me in her husband's murder. No. Oh, where were you on the night of the murder, Mr. Tate? Why couldn't you be located by the police? I was in my office, Mr. Keene, working. I, I worked so late that I slept there on the couch all night. Can you prove that with a witness? No, I, I was all alone. Well, tell me something, Mr. Tate. Were you in love with Jean Owens at any time? Years ago, I might have been. But not anymore. However, your wife could be jealous of Mrs. Owens, even now. You can't implicate Barbara, Mr. Keene. She's completely innocent. That remains to be seen. Mike? Yes, boss. 
Show Mr. Tate the mask we found in his study. Well, it's wrapped in this paper here. Here. Here it is. Do you recognize that mask, Mr. Tate? Why, oh, yes. Jean Owens gave that to me before I was married. And where did she get it? Why, I don't know. She gave it to me when I admired it in her home. Someone had made it from a picture Jean had of me. It seems to me this fellow can't explain very much, Mr. Keene. I'm for taking him down to police headquarters. Well, Mike, one hour more or less won't make any difference. You'd better call the police and tell them we just found Jean Owens' body. Then ask them to send a detail of men to Mr. Tate's home in an hour. I may have important evidence for them. Go right in, Mr. Keene and Mr. Clancy. Thank you. If your wife is here, Mr. Tate, I'd like to talk to her. Oh, my, my wife must be upstairs. I'd better... Boss, it's that fellow Frederick Barlow. So I see, Mike. Jeffrey. Hello, Frederick. Mr. Keene, I see you've managed to locate Jeffrey Tate without anyone else's help. Yes. Right now, he's under suspicion for two murders, Mr. Barlow. Two murders? Gene Owens was strangled to death. No. I didn't kill her, Fred. I swear I didn't. I, I must see my wife. I must speak to her, Mr. Keene. Your wife's upstairs. Mr. Keene, do you want me to call her? Please do, Mr. Barlow. Just a moment. Mr. Keene, it, it doesn't look as if there's a chance for me to prove my innocence. The evidence against you is very strong, Mr. Tate. Well, I, I can't understand it. It's like some kind of an insane dream. Mike, give me the mask you wrapped in that paper, please. Here, Here you are, boss. Mr. Keene, I, I just thought of something. What is it, Mr. Tate? Suppose someone used that mask to impersonate me. Sure, and the boss thought of that long ago. There's only one thing wrong with that theory, Mr. Tate. How did the killer get hold of the mask and then return it to your home? Why, I don't know. Unless your wife was implicated in the crime. She is the only one who could have used this mask. Then why not arrest me, Mr. Keene, and set my husband free? Barbara. Jeffrey, darling, Mr. I... Tate, are you confessing to these murders? I'm showing you that all the evidence isn't against my husband, Mr. Keene. Barbara, keep out of this, please. Well, Mrs. Tate, where is Mr. Barlow? Well, I saw him a moment ago when he called me. He came down the stairs. He must have gone into the study. Mike, stay here with Mr. and Mrs. Tate for a moment. Okay, Mr. Keene. Mr. Barlow. Oh, well. Uh, Mr. Keene. Were you looking for something here in Jeffrey Tate's study? Just uh, a match. Well, there's a lighter on top of the desk. Why bother to look inside the drawers? Oh, uh, I didn't see it. Well, I'm ready to take Mr. and Mrs. Tate to police headquarters. Mrs. Tate, too? Yes, they're both implicated in these murders, I'm afraid. Well, uh... In that case, Mr. Keene, they should have the services of a competent attorney. Yes, that's their privilege. As a friend of the family, I'm going to see to it that they get one. Uh, Dario? Uh, what is it, Mr... Oh, so you answer to the name of Dario, do you? I... I didn't quite hear what you said. Perhaps this mask is your handiwork. By any chance, were you looking for it in that desk when you said you were looking for a match? I never saw that mask before, Mr. Keene. No? May I look at your hands for a moment, Mr. Barlow? What for? Just curiosity. My hands are... They're very artistic hands, like a sculptor or a painter might have. And I'd say you were a sculptor, Mr. Barlow. Would you? Particularly since there seems to be clay underneath your fingernails and clay-colored powder on your fingers. What are you driving at, Keene? You murdered Gene Owens, Barlow. You're crazy. You can't deny it. The evidence is there on your fingers. The police will match the clay under your fingernails with the clay marks you left on Mrs. Owens' throat. That's very interesting. And if you murdered Jean Owens, you also murdered her husband. How? I, I suppose I put this mask over my face and impersonated Jeffrey Tate, eh? No, if you'd used this mask, you would have destroyed it. As a matter of fact, I believe you murdered Jean Owens because of this mask. You were the man who gave it to her years ago... And you knew she would identify you as a sculptor, something you wanted to avoid. So you went to her home, made her tell you what she did with the mask, then killed her to keep her quiet. That's a clever deduction, Mr. Keene. You came back here after Jean Owens told you she'd given the mask to Jeffrey Tate. 
You hoped you'd be able to find it before the police did. And why would I be so anxious to get hold of this mask, Keen? Well, this is only a theory, but I think it can be proven. A clever sculptor can change a face and features with the aid of clay and paint. And if you could make a mask that resembled Jeffrey Tate so closely, you could also change your own features to resemble his. And that's what you did. Don't move or I'll kill you, Keen. Well, that gun won't help you, Barlow. When the police search your apartment, I'm sure they'll find evidence that you are or once were a sculptor. You're right. I was a sculptor and a great one, too. But no one ever appreciated me. No one knew what a genius I was. Rankled in your mind, didn't it, Barlow? I could have taken it if Jean hadn't turned me down for that idiot, Russell Owens. So you, too, were in love with Jean. At first, I thought my rival was Jeffrey Tate, but then I found out it was Russell Owens. Tate took it like a man. But you let it eat inside your soul until it drove you to murder. I'm going out that terrace door, Keen. And if you try to stop me, I'll shoot. <laughs> you see, Keen, I'm still the genius. Even you can't put your hands on me now. No, but I can. Well, you... You, you... A minute, Mike, I thought he was getting away. Well, after you went into the study, Mr. Keene, I started to put two and two together like you did. And I figured I'd better keep an eye on both of you. Oh. Barlow's coming out of it, Mike. Oh, I just gave him a light tap with my gun, Mr. Keene. Just to keep him quiet when he tried to drill a hole in me. It's a strange case, Mike. By making himself up to look like Jeffrey Tate, Barlow almost had a double revenge. Tate was a rival of his, too. And he thought Tate would be held for Russell Owens' murder. Appearing at the window so Gene Owens could see him was deliberate and part of his plan. Well, boss, his makeup days are over. Yes, Mike. I think we can now turn the killer with two faces over to the police. <laughs> Mr. Keene finds the solution to the case of the two-faced murderer. The next time you're suffering from the pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, try Anacin. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve these pains. Now, the reason Anacin is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anacin is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way have discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So next time such pains strike, take Anison. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30, and economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100. The name is Anacin, A-N-A-C-I-N. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, is based on the novel Mr. Keene. The radio sequel is originated and produced by Frank and Ann Hummert. Dialogue by Lawrence Clee. Bennett Kilpack plays Mr. Keene. It is on the air every Thursday at this time. All characters are completely fictional and bear no relation to any person living or dead. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Thursday when the kindly old tracer turns to the tea leaf murder case. suffer heartburn or upset stomach from acid indigestion, safe new Bicidol mints, medically proven, quickly rid stomach of that blown up feeling. Give longer lasting relief than baking soda. Yes, hours of relief. Bicidol mints not only neutralize, but actually carry away excess stomach acids. Soothe irritated stomach lining. Let you sleep all night long when acid indigestion strikes. Carry new Bicidol mints for fast relief anywhere, anytime. <laughs> Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, will be on the air next Thursday at this same time. This is Dick Dunham saying goodbye for Mr. Keene and the Whitehall Pharmacal Company, makers of Anison and Colonos and many other dependable, high-quality drug products. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>